Hello, you wonderful people, and greetings from the city of Takasaki. It's out in Guma Prefecture, about an hour away on the Shinkansen, or as you may know, at the bullet train. Now, this place is famous for one thing, Darumas, a mystical object that's said to grant wishes. But first, let's see a cave dedicated to the Buddhist god of mercy, Kana. If you seek this cave, you're going to have to go on a 20-minute bus ride from the station. Then you're going to have to get out and do a mile hike up the mountains like your grandfather used to do when he was going to school. But luckily, it probably won't be snowing unless it's winter. But let me tell you, in spring and summer, it's really hot. So bring some water with you. Oh, that was a really long walk. It's kind of hot up here. So this cave back here isn't technically a real cave. This was made by a guy who just had a passion in him. He wanted to showcase his belief for the religion and belief for Kanan. And if we go in here, we'll be able to see about well, a lot of money. I believe it's 20 billion yen worth of it. He started building this cave in the early 1900s and he ended when he died in the 1960s. And with that, let's go in. This whole cave is dedicated to the goddess Kanan, who is the goddess of mercy, and uh, it's all a passion project. All these passages were carved just to showcase the gods. And every little passage here has a canon of different varieties. Look at this insect. Oh my God. That thing is terrifying. I don't know where the front and the back is, but it's scary. Each one of these kanon actually has like symbolization of something. This one in particular is for games. I guess maybe more like fortune. In case the power went off in this area, they have a flashlight stuff up here, but uh, man, it'd be hard to find it, especially with those creepy crawlies on the wall. This place was started in the early 1910s, and it's amazing that at the time, this guy was able to make his own opus of art and religion mixed together with primitive tools of scraping and shuffling them out. Good on him for a side gig when you know, you're a uh, dry food salesman. It looks like there's a formation of stalactites, not stalagmites. I, I get confused on that one. Wow. Even in here, the ground has been raked. As you can see, the gods looking down on us. It's crazy. And there's an even more impressive one right here. Just, just insane. I thought we were just going to see little alcoves of Kanan statues, but obviously it's a lot bigger than that. Up there is like a falling down like a waterfall, and it goes into like a great sand. So you have the tunnel here, and then you turn over here, you got this beautiful like Kanan statue area. And then right down here is a real cave. <laughs> like rocks all over the ceiling. And this looks like dangerous. That's why they have like mesh. So if there was a rock that fell, well, maybe it would stop it. This is all one man's dream, one man's passion project. And you know, in a place like Japan, there's not a lot of room for stuff like this, but if you have the money, the time, and the energy, you can make something like this too. If you were born in the early 1900s and you know, you have a lot of area and no one's gonna bother you. It looks like at one point in time, you were able to walk up these stairs and go into this massive atrium, but that time has passed because you can tell there's a padlock on the, on the gate. Can't, can't go in, that's what's stopping you. And finally, you can stand here and pray to Kanan, who's got a flower in her hands, which is supposed to represent the Buddha and all of us, and her hand 
right yonder saying, I'm ready for you. It's almost like the Virgin Mary. Sometimes religion has like these cross sections and everything's like, wait, you got Jesus doing this pose, you got everyone doing this pose. It's interesting. And then you're snapped back to reality. Though this is the land of Buddhist religion, it really does feel like the land of awe because you walk in here and the temperature is so nice, you're just like, ah. So that whole experience is covered just inside this hill. And that's the exit. There's also a garden and a manga a museum, but we don't really have a lot of time for that because we want to go see the Daruma. Well, maybe just a peek at that botanical garden. The man who made all this lived in this house. He was probably a rich man. Uh, this place is beautiful. You know, I was told to go to this cave. You should see a demon at the end of it cracking up. There he is, he's going, whoa, 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 whoa. fooled you. I really like like hell and demonology and stuff like that. So I've been out to a couple of shrines that involve like what happens when you die. And I always like seeing things of, of this nature, but this is one of the most unique ones because it's a happy demon. He's like, ha, you're doing good. <laughs> oh, I just I just saw a good movie. Oh, it was really good. It was called Hellraiser. Oh, what a comedy. This was worth the two feet walk to go see. But now it's time to see some Doruma. Now the place that we're going is a place of power. It's a place where wishes are granted. And folks, it's a little too powerful for one video. So as I always say, you can do it, I can do it, we can all do it. See you next time.